from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with digital coverage of IBM Think 2021. Brought to you by IBM. Hello, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of IBM Think 2021 virtual. Soon we'll be back in person in real life, but this year again, it's a virtual conference. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE for more CUBE coverage. We've got a great guest here, Debbie Vivangus, Global Garage Lead for IBM Services. Uh, Global Garage, great program. Uh, Debbie, great to see you. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thanks for having me. So we've covered the garage a lot on theCUBE in the past and the success, everyone loves the garage. Things are born in the garage, entrepreneurship, innovation has been kind of categorically known for kind of the garage startup. Um, Absolutely. But also it's become um, known for really agi agility and which has been a cloud phenomenon, DevOps. And now we're seeing DevSecOps as a big trend this year with hybrid cloud. So I got to ask you, how is garage doing? with the pandemic, I was like, I can almost imagine people at home kind of disrupted from the office, but maybe more creativity, maybe more energy online. What's going on with the garage? How has your transformation journey been with COVID? Well, John, I mean, it's COVID has been the uh, leveler for us all, right? There isn't a person who hasn't had some challenge or some complexity to you, and that includes our clients. And, and I'm incredibly proud to be able to say that IBM Garage, because it is so digitally native, when the COVID pandemic has struck around the world, every single one of our garages was able to switch to being virtual without fail, without a single day's loss productivity. And that, that I mean, that's hugely um, beneficial to clients who are on an incredible time sensitive journey. And so we've seen as a result of COVID, actually, there are a huge acceleration in garages from two reasons. So number one, from a virtualization perspective, actually it's much easier when everybody's together in the same space. So everybody's together virtually in the same space. And we've seen, you know, acceleration in our velocity and our collaboration because everybody is really learning how to work in that same space. But two, because of the pandemic, because of the pressure on our clients needs to you know, make decisions fast, no, not guess, really be focused on their outcomes, not just doing stuff. The garage really plays to that that objective for them. And so we've seen a huge rise. You know, we are we've gone from in 2019 to just a few hundred garages to finishing 2020 with over two and a half thousand garages and it being embedded across services and the, with the goal of being the primary way our clients experience okay, it. So COVID has been a big, big accelerator. Sorry, Debbie, can you repeat the numbers again? I just want to capture that. I, I missed that. I sure, sure. So we finished 20... on the numbers. Yeah, I know. So we finished 2019 with just under 300 garages and we finished 2020 with just over two and a half thousand. So we've had a huge growth wow. in the in the the range. And it isn't just the number of garages, it's the range of garages and what we're what we're serving with our clients and how we're collaborating with our clients and the topics we're unpacking that is that is really broadened. Yeah, I mean, I, I covered uh, and we've reported on the garage and on the cube and also on siliconangle.com and the past things and through um, your, your news coverage, but that's amazing growth. Um, I got to believe the tailwind from COVID and just the energy around it has uh, uh, energized you. I want to get your thoughts on that because you know what we've reported in the past has been about design thinking, human centered design, all those beautiful things that come with cloud cloud scale, right? You know, you're moving faster, you're innovating. Yeah. Um, and so that's been kind of there, but what you're getting at with this growth is that with, and what COVID has proven. And again, we've been pointing this out, you're seeing the pattern, it's clear. Companies are either retrenching Okay, um, which is refactoring, redesigning, yeah. doing those things to kind of get ready to come out of COVID with a growth strategy. And you're seeing other companies um, build net new innovations. So they're building new capabilities because COVID has shown them kind of pulled back the curtain, if you will, on where the action is. So this means there's two threads going on. You got, okay, I got to transform my business and I got to refactor and then, or hey, we got net new business models. These are kind of two different things and not mutually exclusive. What's your comment on that? Uh, and I think that my comment on it is that is the sweet spot that Garage comes into its own, right? You, you mentioned lots of things in that. You talked about design thinking and agility and, you know, these other buzzwords that are used all the time. And Garage, of course, is synonymous with those. Of course, you know, it's Gar uses the best design thinking and agile practices and all of those things that are absolutely core cool to what we do, Des DevOps, 
even through down to design ops. You know, we have the whole range depending on what the client objective is. But I think what is really happening now is the innovation, you know, being something separate it is no longer how to accelerate your, your outcomes and your business outcomes, regardless of whether that is in refactoring and modernizing your existing estate or diversifying, creating new ecosystems and new platforms and new offerings. Regardless of what that is, you can't do it separate to your to your core business. I mean, it's a well-known fact, John, right? Like 75% of transformation programs fail to deliver an impact to the business performance, right? And in the same period of time, there's been huge cuts in innovation funding. And that's because for the same reason, because they don't deliver the impact to the business performance. And that's why Garage is unique because it is entirely focused on the outcome, right? But using user research through design thinking, of course, using agile to deliver it at speed and all of those other things. But it's focused on value, on benefits realization and driving to your outcome. And we do that by putting that innovation at the heart of your enterprise in order to drive that transformation rather than it being something separate. Debbie, I saw you gave a talk uh, um, called Innovation is Dead. Um, obviously that's a provocative title. That's an attention getter. Um, Tell me what you mean by that, because it seems to be a setup. I mean, the innovation is dead. Of course. Was it with a question mark? Were you kind of uh, trying to highlight that you know, innovation is transformation, or were you trying to so highlight? So the full title, the full title was innovation is dead and transformation is pointless. And of course, it's meant to be an eye-catching title, so people show up and listen to my pitch rather than somebody <laughs> else's. But but the reality is, I mean it most sincerely. It's back to that stat: seventy-five percent of these transformation programs fail to deliver the impact. And I and I speculate that that is for a few reasons, because the idea itself wasn't a good one or wasn't at the right time, because you were unable to understand what the measure of good looked like and therefore and just be able to create that path. And in order to transform a company, you must transform the individuals within a company. And so that way of working becomes incredibly holistic. And it's those three things, that I think amongst the whole myriad of others, that are the primary reasons why those programs fail. And what Garage does is it breaks those by putting innovation at the heart of your enterprise and by using data-driven value orchestration. That means that we don't know, we don't guess where the value to be gained is. Yeah. We know it's no longer chucking ideas at the wall to see what sticks. It's meaningful research. It's not searching through, this is my favorite quote from my dear friend, Courtney Noel, who says it's not about searching for the innovation needle in the proverbial haystack. It's using your research in order to de-risk your investment and drive your innovation to enable your outcomes. And so if you do innovation without a view to how it's going to yield your business outcomes, I agree. I fundamentally agree that it's pointless. Yeah, exactly. And you know, of course we're on the writing side, we love titles like innovation is dead, long live innovation. You know, so, you know, that's classic, you know, to get your attention, but I think exactly, what's, what's exactly. And of course, that, I, what I really mean is that innovation is a separate entity. Totally. There's no longer relevant for the company to make sure they achieve their business outcomes. Well, this is what I wanted to, uh, to just double click on that with you on is, is that you look at transformation, you guys are essentially saying transformation meets innovation with the garage philosophy, if I yeah. get that right. Um, and, and, and it's interesting, I had, and we've experienced this here with theCUBE, we're theCUBE virtual, we're not at IBM Think, there is no physical game day like well, stuff as you normally can see, do. I'm in my house. <laughs> and, and so I was talking to a CEO and he said, I said, hey, you guys are doing really, really good. You know, we had to pivot with the cube. And he goes, you guys did a good pivot yourself. He goes, no, John, we did not pivot. We actually put our business on hold because of the pandemic. We actually created a line extension. So technically we're going to bring that business back when COVID comes, is gone and we come back to real life. So it's technically not a pivot. We're not pivoting our business. We're, we've created new functionality through the yeah. innovations that they were doing. So this is kind of like, this is the real deal here. This is like the pandemic yeah, and it, proven. What's your, share your thoughts on that. Well, it's just, it, to me, it's about people get so focused on the output that they, they lose track of the outcome, right? And so being really clear on what you're doing and why, and the outcomes can be really broad that, you know, so instead of saying, you know, we're all going to implement a new ERP or build a new mobile app. That's 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 not an outcome, right? What we should be saying is what we're trying to achieve is a 10% growth in net promoter score in China, right? In this 
group or whatever it is we were trying to achieve, right? Or we want to make a 25% reduction in our operating cost base by, you know, simplifying our estate. Whatever those outcomes are, I mean, you, that's the starting point. And then driving that to use to use as the vehicle for what is the right innovation, what is going to deliver that value and fast, right? Garage delivers, you know, three to five times faster than, than other models and, um, and a reduced delivery cost. And so, so it's all about that speed, speed yeah. of decision, speed of insight, speed of culture and training, speed of new skills and speed to outcomes. Well, Deb, you got a great job. Love what you're doing. And Garage got a great model. Congratulations on the growth. Love this intersection or, you know, transformation meets innovation because innovation is transformation and vice versa, this interplay going exactly. on there. I think COVID has proven that. Let me dig into a little bit more about the garage, what's going on. How many practitioners do you guys have there now at IBM? Um, you got growth, are you adding more people in? Obviously virtual first, COVID, is there still centers of design? Take us through what's going on at garage. Certainly. So, so like I think I mentioned it right up front, right? So our goal is to make IBM Garage the primary way our clients experience us. We've proven that it delivers higher value to our clients, and they get a really rich and broad set of outcomes. And so, in order for us to deliver on that promise, we have to be enabled to cross IBM to deliver to it, right? So, over the last um, 18 months or so, we've had a whole range of training programs in Enable. We have a whole badging and certification program. We have all the skills and the pathways and the career pathways defined. But Garage is for everybody, right? And so it isn't about creating a select group that can do this across IBM. This is about making all of services capable. So in 2020, we, we trained over 28,000 people right, in, in all the different skills that are needed from selling to execution to QA to user research, whatever it is. And this year we're launching our Garage Skills Academy, which will take that across all of services and make it easily available. So, you know, we, we will, we've got hundreds and, of thousands. And talk about the footprint on the global side, because again, not to bring up global, but global is what yours in your title. Yeah. Companies yeah. need to be global because now with virtual workforces, you're seeing much more tapped creativity and execution, like ability to execute from global teams. How does that impact you? Well, so Garage is glo as in, it's global in two perspectives, right? So number one, we have garages all around the world, right? It isn't, it isn't just the market of um, uh, you know, our most developed nations in the Americas and Europe. It is everywhere. We see it in all emerging markets from uh, Latin America through to, um, you know, all parts of Eastern Europe, which are really beginning to come into their own. So we see all these different garages of different uh, at different scales and opportunities. So, so definitely global from that niche. But what, what virtualization has also enabled is truly global teams. Because it's really easy to go, oh, I need one of those. Okay, I need a supply chain expert and I need an AI expert and I need somebody who's got industry experience in whatever it is. And you can quickly gather them around the virtual table, you know, faster than you can in a in a physical table. But we still leverage the global communities. It's an it's expert physical. network. It's, you have an expert network there at IBM. We have a huge garage. network, yeah, and both, both within IBM and of course a growing network of, of ecosystem partners that we you know, continue to work with. Well, Debbie, I'm really excited. Congratulations on the growth. I'm looking forward to partnering with you on your ecosystem as that develops. I can almost imagine you must be getting a lot of outside IBM uh, practitioners and experts coming in to collaborate. It Absolutely. is a social construct. It's a great program. Thanks for sharing. My pleasure. It's been great to be here. Thank you. Okay, IBM's global garage lead, Debbie. Vangus, who's here on theCUBE with IBM Services, a phenomenon, this is a social construct that's helping companies with digital transformation, intersecting with innovation. I'm John Furrier, your host, thanks for watching.